Hey guys, there is definitely a resurgence in interest in unlimited cards. Um, I have been asked many times to sell my unlimited collection and the offers are getting better and better. I think Pay Money Wubby has kind of increased the excitement and hype over opening older, older sealed magic. I'm not talking about Dominaria, War of the Sparks, even though it might seem like ages since they have actually made any money for you. I'm talking about older, more expensive cards. Now, how Paint Money Wubby does it is he does uh, every, all his patrons and subscribers, they buy in. This is something that I always thought Alpha Investment really had the inventory to do well and would be really fun to do, is they would all buy in and they would just get a random slot. And that's exactly the model Pay Money Wubby has done. And this is the exact model that Logan Paul used for Pokemon as well. Where people buy into a random slot and hopefully they get lucky. Now previously, Pay Money Wubbies had issues with fake decks or decks without rares. And um, there's a big debate as to like, you know, that Ancestral is his uh, partner. So they've kind of guaranteed it. So that definitely helps. But this is an unlimited edition, and on one of them, he actually pulls a Plateau. I think that's probably... The other one, he pulls a Mox Emerald, which graded a CGC 10 pristine. Now, how much leeway CGC is very lenient to influencers. Influencers love, love, love this. Um, I think in terms of why, why they love it so much, uh, it should be pretty obvious to you. Influencers just love gambling. Gambling is probably the most popular and most watched thing on YouTube, Twitch, Kick.com, and so on. They just love gambling, and gambling when it's not your money, when it's other people's money. I mean, yes, when, when you hit a cool card, you feel it. Uh, when you don't hit a good card, you also feel it. But... At the end of the day, it's not your money, and you can kind of continue to gamble um, infinitely because, again, you're actually making money from this. So I always thought this was probably the best scenario, and I was wondering why no other YouTubers did it, like Penguin Zero. Um, this seems like a very, very profitable venture where you sell slots into very rare, and again, it, it makes sense. It's a box break. You know, there's an entire website called whatnot.com that just does 24 hours of box breaking. But I think the value here is uh, there's additional value that it's pay money wubby and that he'll grade your card and they will probably give you a better grade than not. Um, there's the value that, you know, you get your shout out, you know, on Twitch and so on and a huge channel. It's the same value as Logan Paul. People were paying to enter those Pokemon breaks because for insane amount of money, a lot of them were advertising their crypto at the time, their crypto projects at the time, right? They would get a shout out and they would open packs and you would see what you got. So I do expect this to continue only because it is, you know, I would be shocked if it wasn't making pay money, wubby money. Um, I assume it's making him quite a decent amount of money. And I would be, uh, and it's very entertaining. It is a lot of fun. Um, I think at the end of the day, you have a situation where this can go infinite because, you know, you, you can find people to pay for it. There's more than enough people in line that will buy a card, a single card from this pack. And that's really bringing the love for vintage back. So as I mentioned, the dual lands are just the hottest commodity. Star City Games for a very long time didn't have a cash buy list for the dual lands. They're back. I mean, if you want to know like what the smartest people in the room are doing, who now who do I think the smartest people in the MTG Finance room is? Is it anyone on Reddit? No, it is obviously Card Kingdom based on the volume, the amount, um, and, and just how often they've been buying cards. It's obviously Star City Games, probably TCG Player, right? Owned now by eBay, and they wrap Channel 5 all up with that as well. Uh, these are the smartest people in the room because they have the access to the most data. And from the best data, and then not only the most data, the most recent data. They have recent sales, they have recent comps, they have recent everything. So if the smartest people in the room, Star City Games, is saying, you know what, we're back in. You know, we're back into this dual land hunt. They're, 
why would they be accumulating something that people always make the argument, oh, the reserve list is going away. You don't think Star City Games, that does most of these tournaments, you don't think they would have like a heads up beforehand? Of course they do. They have employee, they have former employees. Their current employees are now employees at Wizard of the Coast. They know exactly, it's their business to know when things will be reprinted or the reserve list would go away. That would be very big news. It would be very hard. I mean, even if you had a small amount of people knowing about the news, I guarantee you somebody would tell Star City Games or Card Kingdom. Especially Card Kingdom, they're right in Wizard of the Coast. In fact, a lot of Wizard of the Coast employees I heard play at Card Kingdom. Right? They have good relationships with the owners and so on. So so if you're telling me, like, and this is the kind of the crazy part, oh, the reserve list is gone. Well, why would Card Kingdom, the people most connected, I would say, and then Star City Games, of course, very connected, why would all of them be desperately increasing the buy list, therefore, you know, and their quantity is almost unlimited, why would they be increasing, promoting, advertising that they're buying, buying, buying? You know, sell us your cards is the big link in the first link on the right. Like, so why would they do that if... In fact, they were not interested, right, in your cards. It would make no sense. It would make no sense. It's because they know something that you do not know, and that something is very simple, that these dual lands are not going to be reprinted, and they're just going to continue to go up in price. They're the smartest people in the room, but I do think Pay Money Wabi has definitely, definitely uh, done more interest in the cards games. You know, people, they're getting these cards graded, they're opening them. People who have never opened them before are now interested in collecting a set of them. Maybe a play set. I mean, it is crazy right now. Like, in terms of Unlimited, I can't hold on to it. Um, I traded a Mox Sapphire away for some Weiss cards the other day, and, and the, the value was tremendously high on my... I got a very good deal. Now, I, was I trading it for, like... Another do no, I, I was trading for Weiss, right? Because I wanted to build up my Weiss collection a little bit more. Very interesting stuff, man. Um, definitely uh, old school, you know, Mox Jet, Mox Ruby. I remember buying my Ruby for like 800. Buy list is 3,000 now. Seems like a long time ago, but it really was not a long time ago. Saren Sanctum, I used to pick those up for 20, 25 from my local game store. It's a $160 buy list now. Like, things are picking up, and the reserve list was always the way to go. Reserve list was always the way to go. Unfortunately, not everyone understood that fact. What can you do, right? What can you do? If they want to buy MetaZoo, they're going to be buying MetaZoo, right? What can you do to them? Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below. Bye, <laughs> guys.